on this idea of Draymond the coach. And if any of you would like to purchase Dan Dibley's Warriors paraphernalia, if Draymond becomes the coach, because he out. I got hats. I got jerseys. I got a ton of T-shirts. I even have some old school We Believe stuff I'd get rid of. Who you got? What jerseys? It's my own jersey. Oh, it, just it, his yeah. Dibley on it? It was the jersey that they gave us. <laughs> the one that Larry Kruger famously modeled on his Instagram. It's less cool. That's about three sizes too small. It was the old sleeved <sighs> jersey. Yeah, I'm not like well, Doc Pandia with jersey in the cart. I don't do a lot of jerseys. No, I'm with you because you have to be very careful unless it's a Curry type situation. You got to be careful who you buy because you just don't know how long they're going to be there. I got gifted a Warrior jersey once upon a time. Remember the ones with the cable car on the front, the yeah, special yeah, jerseys? Yeah. Someone bought me one. This was before I came back home. So I'm living in Southern California and someone's like, got you a gift. Got you a Warrior jersey. And I opened it up and I'm like, oh my gosh, look at this beautiful thing. Turned it around. What's the name on the back? Van Exel. <laughs> oh, that's a classic. It, it is, and I still have it. Yep. But, like, you know. <laughs> yeah. Not quite a lifetime dub. Anyway, uh, let's go to Pat in Foster City. Hi, Pat. What are you doing? Hey, you know, I, I'm with you on this, Dibs. I, I'll, you can have my merchandise, too. And I go back to Joe Barry Carroll days as a season ticket holder for the Warriors. I There's no way I would want Draymond Green representing this team. There's, there's no way. I, I, I think that. Yeah, I, I don't look at the punching and the kicking and all that so much for the violence of it, although I certainly don't condone it. I don't like it. He's unique in that regard, and I don't like it a bit. But the thing that really irks me and the thing that I would just couldn't see him being a, a, a coach and a, a leader in a team is that how much he's let the team down. I mean, he, he's cost us regular season games. He's cost us playoff games. He's cost us playoffs, period. And, you know, the number one thing is being available to your teammate. And if you're, if you can't control yourself to the point where you're taking yourself off the court, that's, that's not having a bad game. That, that's like saying to the team, you know, to me, that's, uh, that's giving the finger to the team. I don't, I don't care about you. I'm, I'm, it's about how I feel. I'm going to act out. I, I just couldn't support that as a, as a coach and a rep- representative of the team. And, so and Pat, I agree, Pat, Dibs, I want to, I want, I want to jump in and ask you a question here. Same one that I asked uh, Dibs, because you and I see this differently, which is fine. I think your opinion is probably well represented uh, out there, and everybody listening to us right now. Um, but you and Dibs have both said you you could not support Draymond representing this team, and what I don't understand is why you don't see him as a representative of this team now. Well, I, I never, I, I, I would have, uh, b- before, you know, if you go back maybe, I don't know how many years, three or four years ago, uh, I, I supported Draymond. I thought he was, you know, a really good player. I thought he, you know, brought effort. He brought smarts. He brought a lot of things to the team. But over the last several years, with the technical fouls and the violence and punching and missing playoff games and costing us playoff games, I, I've, I've tuned him out. So I, I'm a Warrior fan despite Draymond. I, I've never... I'm not, I've not. I've long not been a Draymond fan. Right. I, I so we didn't have him. I, so why so, would that? Yeah. Why would that change if he were the coach? Is what I'm getting at, Pat. Like you said, you well, wouldn't. I, I guess, yeah. you, you wouldn't no, want him as no, a leader I, of the team, and and I would argue he very, very much already is. Yeah, I, I, I guess what what I with the way I look at it, it's not so much from a a local standpoint, but more from a standpoint of you know who represents the Warriors on the global map. Who is the spokesperson? Who's the person that people look to? And, you know, now it's Steve Kerr, and I think he's been terrific. He he, he comes out on issues, and he's a team guy, and he, you know, I, I have tremendous respect for him, and I think almost everyone does. But with Draymond, I, I just don't see how he would have that level of respect. Maybe amongst diehard Warrior fans he would, but not not on a global stage where people look at me. They look, look at him as, a, as kind of a thug, you know, like a guy that can't control himself. Uh, Pat, uh, that, that's just my yeah take. yeah fair enough pat thanks for the call appreciate it i i, I guess where, where i keep getting stuck is not uh necessarily although i don't agree uh and and don't see it the same way as pat which is totally fine where i get stuck though is when we say well except steve is the one who is representing the warriors on a global stage right he's he's out front uh, in terms of the non-playing warriors, yes, he's the representative. But I would argue all of these guys, Steve yeah. and Steph and Clay 
and Dre and Mike Dunleavy and Bob Myers before him are 100% all leaders and all global representatives of the brand. I would argue and not argue that point because I think you're right, but I would come back at you and say that Draymond Green is a negative representative of the brand more than any of those guys combined. Wow. And you can look at, if you're not inside the Warriors bubble, if you're on the outside looking in, what do you think of Draymond Green if you're just a fan? You think... Like Pat the caller was just saying, the word thug, I think, is is a word I don't like to use because it evokes certain yeah. things that I don't think are appropriate to this conversation. It's not but a fair word at all. It's yeah. not, but Draymond Green, as a representative of the brand, is more negative than Clay, Steph, Dunleavy, Lacob, Kerr, mm. or any other member of the organization. Depends on where, how you feel, I think, about branding. Um, I see what you're saying. If you're outside this organization, you think about Draymond Green and the Warriors, you think a certain thing about it. I'd argue you think about the brand a lot more because of Draymond. Right, but I think you think negatively about the brand because of Draymond. I don't. Not exclusively negatively, but if you're outside this market, you're going to think more negatively about the brand because of Draymond than any other person. Uh, maybe. It depends on how you feel about branding. Like I And said, how you feel about Draymond. Yeah, but Dray- Draymond Green... Uh, you know, I don't always subscribe to this, but you hear a lot of people say things like, um, there's no such thing as bad publicity. Sure. If you feel that way, then Draymond Green is absolutely a driver of this brand. Like, I would argue... Right. Do you feel that way, though, if it, you're like... I mean, I'm sure that... I don't, I don't always buy that there's no such thing as negative publicity. I don't think that. Right. I, ask Scotty Scheffler this week if he thinks there's such thing as negative publicity. And I wonder about I the endorsements there's... of the, the guys with the Golden State Warriors because Steph has got massive endorsements. Right. clay has like, got a lot, and Draymond doesn't have as many. Who's more marketable, Draymond Green or Clay Thompson? Probably Clay Thompson. I disagree beyond wholeheartedly. Well, and I, part of that is who seeks out the marketing opportunities. Well, Draymond Green is putting himself out there now more and more than ever before. Oh, so, so is Clay. We don't know who's trying to do what behind the scenes. Draymond right. Green's a bigger name than Clay Thompson. He is. He just is. He also has more of a negative, no I doubt. think, impression of him than Clay Thompson. Uh, negative, yes to some, but I would say, again, it's also, you could look at that just as, like, imprint. Um it could be considered controversial. That's not necessarily right. quote unquote negative. It Agreed, just but right? his it controversy is. tends to bring with it negativity because of the on court actions. And if we use the word antics, we would talk about Draymond yeah. Green and his antics, which I don't think are positive reflections of the brand. Well, I just don't think they're as debilitating as people make them uh, make them sound, you know, and 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 there is kind of an interesting push pull. First, let me say this, you're listening to 957 the game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco and Odyssey Sports Station, always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube powered by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend, open a First NorCal first class money market today. There's always multiple ways to look at something. So, my ears perk up when I hear, for example, what Pat just said. Draymond has cost the Warriors, and then fill in blank, fill in blank, fill in right. blank. The Warriors also do nothing good without Draymond Green. So if you're going to say he, oh, he cost them a championship, he did, and he won them four. Well, and so it, which, so which yeah. way do you want to look at it? I'd argue you have to look at both. Yes, but I hear a lot of people. Pick one. Draymond is either irreplaceable. I go, true. Draymond is also a lot. (laughs) A lot to handle and collateral damage at times. Agreed. But there are some people who only look at one of those two points. And that, to me, is short-sighted, and you can't do that. And I've always said that Draymond Green cost you a championship, but when he cost you that championship... It gave rise to Kevin Durant coming here, and you got two championships because of it. If Draymond Green didn't cost you that championship, then Kevin Durant never comes here. If you win that championship with Draymond Green, Kevin Durant does not become a Warriors, and Kevin has said as much. He's not going to come join this team after they win a championship. So, yeah, if Draymond doesn't get suspended and you win that chip, you probably don't win another one right away because Kevin doesn't come here, and I don't think that that team 
wins three in a row of without course. Kevin Durant. Of course, yeah. No, the, and the story unfolds the way it does. It's just exactly. To, again, my point being, I think you have to look at the whole picture. I hear a lot of people pick one. They're either just Draymond fans, right. and they're like, man, we don't win a damn thing without him, or like, in my opinion, our last caller, Draymond cost us this, and he cost us that, and he cost us that, and he cost us that. Well, you like, got to look at the whole balance sheet. Like, you're only looking at things, like, again, the the five situations in history where you feel he has completely pushed the team in a negative direction, and you're leaving out the fact that every single person in that organization says, Dynasty right. doesn't exist if he's not here. And I get Period. that. And I'm not trying to look back at not. any of I, that. I, I I'm looking yeah. at it right now from this point forward. And I look at Draymond Green and three more years. And Steph's got two. And Clay may be done. We don't even know. But I'm looking forward to a time when Draymond Green is no longer doing what he does, which is antics. Yeah, I mean, and I, I, like, sure. I like when Draymond Green is playing basketball and when Draymond Green is doing what he does, taking charges, playing good defense, passing the ball, podcast all you want, inside the NBA, sure, if I happen to catch it, he's very entertaining. I love that. I do not want the future of this organization to involve him on the sideline as the head coach. And, and, and I'm sure your point is well represented. I'd be, let's put it this way, I'm not over here being like, he should be the next head coach. Yeah, I'd be intrigued. I'd be open-minded, and that's how I'd answer it. Me giving up my fandom might be just a passionate in-the-moment take, and I don't know if push came to shove and we oh, got to that moment. No, I don't, no, no, you no know, don't leave your take. I, never, no, I love your take. I love the take, too, Mark. I got but video it's, ideas. There's dibs in his backyard with the barbecue. With the, uh, and the the barbecue. Like, I've on. never understood <laughs> that from him. <laughs> I'm very eco friendly. I can't imagine that's very eco friendly. Well, we, we but find an, uh, we, we can find an eco way to do this. I mean, what do I do? I become I can't become a Kings fan. I c- absolutely adorable. revile the Lakers. Do I become a Clippers fan? I'm already bald like Balmer. Uh, Golden State Valkyries. I love the Valkyries. There you go. I love um, the Valkyries. I can't go, wait till they get Paige Beckers. Let's go to a uh, boy. She can't wait to be a Valkyries. Right. You can tell she's all over social media. Diane in Walnut Creek. Hey, what's going on? Thank you for calling the show. Hey, thanks for taking my call. I just wanted to add that I think that Draymond has really upstaged um, Steph Curry as the story of the of the team. It used to be really positive in the beginning when it was Steph Curry was always the conversation. Now it's Draymond Green is the conversation, and I think Draymond Green and John Morant have have also both hurt the league in general huh. and they've turned off fans in general people do, I know people who won't watch any basketball anymore because of both of them it's interesting that you put those two in the same sentence can I can I ask you about that Diane like why do you put the two of them it like their antics on the same level well, one, John Morant just symbolically symbolized violence, but Draymond Green actually is violent. Okay. Could I not respond that Draymond Green's violence was a punch and John Morant's was a gun? Yeah, but he just showed a gun. Draymond Green actually choked someone and kicked someone who's very famous, like, um, you know, kicking other players and... Yeah, you know, he he behaves terribly, well, worse than John ja Morant. So John ja, John ja Morant punched a seventeen year old and, and, and uh, yeah, was exonerated. It, so and and Diane, thank you. Yeah, yeah. the John ja, the ja Morant story. I know the one that got the most run was him flashing a gun from a club. There's a hell of a lot more to the entire picture of John ja Morant, and and yes, some of it is absolutely at least in the criminal realm, and that that right. is why. That's why the NBA handled Ja the way they did. Yeah. And I, I get the comparison. I, I just had questions about it. I don't see those two as the same thing. Not me. I don't either. And, you know, her use of violence to describe both. I think that the only act of true violence that Draymond Green has perpetrated was the punch on Jordan Poole. I think that that was a true act of violence. And I don't want to re-adjudicate whether or not Jordan pushed him first and what Draymond, his response, was it appropriate and all the rest of it. But I do know that John ja Morant was involved in a basketball argument where a teenager threw the ball in his face 
and he punched the kid, and then his entourage jumped on him and pummeled the poor kid. Yeah, there was also so, the, the there was also the gun flashing and threats sure, in the sure. car, brandishing. Another, yeah, brandishing. I mean, no, 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 not the social no, the media laser one. Pointer. The yep. one, the yep. one outside against yep. the other team after the game. There's just a lot. There's sure. a lot with John Morant that there I is. feel is a hell of a lot more dangerous than uh, than on court stuff. Even if we're talking the Jordan Poole one, right. which was horrible, but. Um, I just find those to be a little bit of a different. They are idea. different. I, I also wonder, though, Mark, about the ongoing chatter from Draymond Green, which I know is his brand on podcasts and on Inside the NBA, and he's he's talking his talk about other NBA players. I wonder if that doesn't hurt him if he ends no. up trying to be a coach in the association. Um, let's go to uh, Austin in San Jose. Hey, Austin, thanks for calling. What's up? Hey Mark, good evening. We, we agree again. What the heck's going on? Man? Well, that's we're the end. That, that's it. That's we're it. Gonna ruin, we're going to ruin this bit. No, <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm out. I'm out. Dibs is doing the rest of the show solo. What's going on, Austin? How you doing? If you and I agree, I'm wrong. And and and, and Dibs triggered me today, uh, as as only Dibs can. Oh, by the way. Um, I mean, this whole thing with with Draymond. I mean, this this is. I mean, I, it scares me a little bit, Dibs, because you're sort of, sort of really walking down some, some dangerous areas as far as uh, uh, the way you ca- the way you kind of characterize Draymond. Yeah. Uh, then, then someone just called and threw in uh, John Morant. I mean, come on, man! I mean, we're talking about totally different situations. Yeah, here. And that's I mean, what Draymond, I said, Austin. I immediately it, refuted that. So don't man. don't try to paint me with that same brush, Austin. But go ahead. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But 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 when you're on the radio, sort of suggesting that uh, you know the guy's bad for the brand, and I mean, listen, the brand has done pretty well with Draymond. Last time I checked, uh, Joe Lacob isn't great getting any poorer. Uh, in fact, I think the brand's probably getting better. Uh, the Warriors, as a brand, you, you take you take Draymond off that roster, and look, let's be honest. I mean, the great. I mean, Clay and Steph are great guys, but they're not winning anything, and they were getting pumped by people before. They had somebody that could actually be an enforcer, and they had you know Iggy and, and those guys here. So let's not get it twisted. I mean, you got to have guys like Draymond as a coach. Absolutely, I think the league wide, the players respect the fact that he stands up for his his teammates. Man, I mean, this whole notion that the guys wouldn't want to play for him, I think, is ridiculous. So I I, I totally disagree with you, Dibley. You have your opinion, but. I'm sure they wouldn't care too much, by the way. If you were the only guy that left, they probably wouldn't care that much, bro. Talk to you later. Yeah, Austin, thanks, bro. Austin, thanks. I don't know. That, that, we didn't need that shot at the end. but uh, I, You shoot your shot, Austin. It's all you got. It, it is all you got. That That's true. I mean, look, it's an entertainment entity. I, I bet you'd agree with me here. Draymond not being a part of this current Warrior brand, it's a hell of a lot more boring. It's a hell of a lot for more sure. boring. For sure. And he does a, make it interesting. And, We're talking about Draymond Green on May 22nd, and they're not going to play basketball for four and a half months. He's easily the most talked about warrior. It's not even close. Right. It's not even close. And one of his teammates is one of the greatest 10 players who's ever played. Yes, I said that. Yeah. Yes, I said that. So, I yeah, like I, I think there's. 